Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Breakers Creations, and in this video I'm going to test out some of the fantastic fluxes available from Styri. I recently did a video on the new player in the flux market, Styri. In truth, they are not really a new player, they just have a new name. Rather unexpectedly, I received this box full of different samples of Flux, and I plan to do my best to test as many as I can. Here are all of the samples I received. Many of them are designed for use with specific metals or manufacturing processes, which prevents me from being able to adequately test them all. I also received a bunch of plungers and 14 gram syringe tips, though I do prefer to use plungers of my own design that I've printed on my Creality K1 3D printer. There is a link in the description to the STL file of my plunger. So let's start right from the beginning. What is flux and why do we need it? When working with molten metals such as solder, the metal can react with the air or oxidise. The result being the flux becomes harder to work with and doesn't adhere to the target surface. Flux helps to negate the effects of oxidisation. So why do we need so many different fluxes? The formulas can vary based on the temperature you use, the metal they're designed to work with, whether you're using lead-free or leaded solder, whether it's for hobbyists or large-scale manufacturing, soldering irons or hot air rework, the viscosity, how easy it is to clean, whether it's corrosive, whether it has UV tracer, whether it contains REACH-compliant chemicals, you name it. Most of these fluxes have a no-clean specification. That basically means that they are not corrosive and any flux residue left behind won't do damage to the surface. Having said that, it's still strongly encouraged to try and clean off as much as you can, but if you miss a little, it's not going to cause any long-term problems. Most of these fluxes are REACH compliant, which means they comply with the strict chemical restrictions in the EU. Full specs of all these fluxes are available on the STERI website. In addition to the fluxes, we also have some solder paste. For those who don't know what solder paste is, it's tiny little balls of solder suspended in a flux formula. When heated, it melts into liquid solder that adheres to metal and is often used in conjunction with stencils for surface mount soldering. Three of these solder pastes contain leaded solder balls, one contains lead free. The difference between these three here, T4, T5 and T6, refer to the different sized solder balls in the paste. There is also a conformal coating which you can apply to circuits to protect them. Not everyone has the same requirements I do, but these are the things I look for in a flux. I covered these in one of my previous videos, but here's a recap. Viscosity. The flux needs to be thick enough that it doesn't just flow away, but not so thick that it's hard to clean off. Clarity. When I apply flux to pins of an IC, I like to be able to see the pins under the flux, so I don't like the flux too opaque. Odour. Some fluxes have a pungent chemical smell that makes them unpleasant to work with, even when using a fume extractor. The less odour, the better. Longevity. The flux remains effective even after prolonged exposure to a soldering iron or hot air rework. Residue. The flux doesn't turn into some gluggy black mess after repeated exposure to heat. Cleaning. The flux is easy to clean even after being left on the board for several hours. UV tracer. Being able to see the flux under UV light for checking that all residue has been removed after cleaning. Safety. I spend a lot of time using flux, so I'll always be happier if the chemicals are less harmful. I've squeezed out a small amount of each of the 16 fluxes I have onto this copper board. I've decided to test only 10 of them, as these are better suited for the sort of hand soldering I do. This has absolutely no bearing on the quality of the fluxes I haven't selected, I'm just testing ones I believe are better for my purposes. These fluxes are darker because they are rosin based. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that the ASM Tacky Flux has always been my favourite, though I also really like the V3 and the V2. There are a few specialty fluxes here, such as the Hydra series, which are a water soluble flux, LED, 
designed for light emitting diodes and solar applications. BGA designed for working with ball grid array chips to help keep the balls in place. Low temperature flux for working with tin bismuth alloys. ENIG flux designed for use with electroless nickel immersion gold PCBs and high temperature flux for use with hot air rework. Some of the fluxes I'm testing today weren't even designed for the sort of hand soldering I do, but I'll be trying them out anyway. I don't care what anything was designed to do. I care about what it can do. To begin with, I want to test how they react to heat. So I've baked the blobs of flux in a hot oven for a few minutes. These fluxes are water-based, so you can see how runny they became when heated, and you can see how there are some green flecks as it's reacted with the copper underneath it. Some of the fluxes have stayed in neat little blobs, while others got quite runny and strayed out of their squares. Now I want to see how easy they are to clean. After baking the flux, I let it cool and sit for 48 hours. Then I placed it in my ultrasonic cleaner for one minute. The cleaner is filled with some detergent diluted in warm distilled water. Not surprisingly, the Hydra MA and the Hydra Pro water soluble fluxes at the top cleaned up pretty well, but many of the others are beginning to wash away too. The rosin fluxes are probably the most stubborn. After five minutes, most have cleaned away quite well. Keep in mind that they have all had an opportunity to get very sticky over the last two days. I wouldn't normally leave flux on a surface for that long before cleaning. Now I move on to some practical use. I decided to do some trace repair, as this is a task that requires a good quality flux that doesn't burn away too quickly, otherwise you have to constantly reapply. It also exposes the flux to prolonged heat, which will test the flux's endurance. I'm using Kester leaded solder, though many of these fluxes are suitable for both leaded and lead-free solders. One at a time, I check the flux's clarity, check to see whether it had a UV tracer, check the odour, oh that stinks, then did three or four trace repairs without reapplying any flux. Once complete, I then cleaned the flux away with some isopropyl alcohol, a toothbrush and a tissue. All of these fluxes contain a UV tracer, though it was quite subtle in the Hydra Pro flux. One thing I must say is that all fluxes performed well. I've tried lots of different brand fluxes over the years and I've used some absolute shockers, ones I've thrown away after using only once because they were so bad. Among these Styri fluxes, I definitely found ones I preferred, but there really wasn't a dud in the lot. One of the fluxes that really surprised me was the Hydra MA. As a water-soluble flux, I assumed this would just boil away into nothingness the moment I started using it. But this was not the case. It was nice and clear, mild odour, good performance and easy to clean. It's also reach compliant, so this one ticks lots of boxes. For clarity, the winner was the medium temp. It was the clearest flux I've ever seen, but it had a pretty unpleasant smell and didn't perform as well as some of the other fluxes. The Hydra MA, V3, ASM, high temp and LED also had very good clarity. The MA was probably the worst being almost completely opaque upon application, though it does clear up once heat is applied. For odour, the best were probably the VSUHF and the BGA, but most of them were pretty good. The V3 and the LED both smell quite sweet. The worst smelling were the MA and medium temp with quite a strong chemically smell. In terms of performance, the LED was the standout, but the Hydra MA, V3, V2, ASM, BGA and MA all performed well. And even the ones that didn't get shortlisted for performance were still way better than many other flux brands I've tried, so there were no real losers here. I also tested these fluxes with the hot air station and they all performed well. No real standouts, but I do think the Hydra MA struggled a little. So after all these tests, the ones that topped my list were the ASM and V3, not surprisingly, the Hydra MA and the Styri LED. The Styri LED is a great flux. It's a little bit harder to clean than some of the others, but it has excellent clarity, a pleasant odour, reach compliance and very good flux performance. Unfortunately, this one is currently only available in a 5 gram tube and costs a little more than some of the other formulas. 
If cost is your main consideration, ASM is the clear winner. It's one of the cheaper fluxes, has great clarity, very little odour and excellent performance. If you're looking for a flux that cleans easily, Hydra MA is my winner. Great clarity, very little odour and excellent performance, though it is more expensive than the ASM. If you don't have good fume extraction, I'd go with the V3. Great clarity, sweet smelling, excellent performance and more health friendly. Without a doubt, my favourite is still the ASM, so you can expect to see this one taking top spot on my workbench for the foreseeable future. So that's it. Have I missed something? Is there a specific task you would like me to try with these fluxes? Let me know in the comments. Have you tried any Sturry fluxes? What's your favourite? Please leave your comments about what formulas you have used and what you thought of them. You can purchase Sturry Flux either from Amazon or use the link in the description to get a 10% discount on purchases directly from the Sturry online store. A big thank you to Sturry, I received these Flux samples for free but I've not been paid for my opinions. Thanks for watching.